Hello again and welcome back to the programming and coding basics with VBA, Python and Java with JavaScript brought to you by Quadroot R&D. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for updates on future videos for this course. But we've also got more courses lined up with intermediate and advanced topics in programming, data science, engineering and more. In this video, we will finally get to the concepts of coding. We'll discuss the important terminology that we'll be using during this course, so pay attention. If it's too much to grasp at one go, don't worry, you can always come back. We'll then discuss data types and the all-important declaration of variables, which is the first thing one needs to do before starting your program. So let's get right to it. The first thing is syntax. These are the set of rules to be followed when writing a program. It's the grammar of the language. For example, colon, semicolon, comma, round brackets, curly brackets, square brackets, single quote, double quote, and etc. Then you have keywords, which are predefined, built-in words used to write a program in your language. It's the vocabulary of the language. Now, syntax and keywords are different for each programming language. Some may be similar or even identical, but capitalization may differ. Then you have comments. Now these are not executed when the program is run, but they're useful for structuring your code and it aids in debugging. Ideally, they should be used for explaining what blocks of code do, the logic behind them, and the algorithm steps. Then you have operators. They perform operations on data, like mathematical operations, for example, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, power, or you can have assignment operators, which is your equal to sign, where you assign a value to a variable. For example, x equals to 5. Or you can have logical operators, like equal to, less than, greater than, and, or. Now these are used for logical checks. Then you have data types. You have three primitive data types. Numerical, which are numbers, string, which are text, and boolean, which are binary, yes or no, true or false. Or you can have arrays, which are a collection of these data elements. Could be a collection of numerical, or a collection of string, or a boolean, or a combination of either. Then you have literals versus variables. Literals are constant hard-coded values, whereas variables are dynamic and changing. In school, we learned x, y, z. They were variables. Then you have identifiers. Now, these are user-defined names given to variables, programs, and functions, which are mini-programs, and they describe the data stored in the variable or function. For example, user age is the age of the user. The next concept is indentation. Now, these are leading white spaces or tabs at the beginning of a logical line. Now, it's a good practice to structure your code with indents, but it's mandatory in Python. And they are used to determine the hierarchy level of the logical line used to determine grouping of statements. What this means is that your code runs in this direction. Now, the outermost statements will usually be checks. And if the check is passed, then it goes to this. And if this check is passed, it'll go to this. And your innermost statements are operations. So it'll tend to go to the innermost statements if it passes the checks, and then perform all the operations. And then it'll go to the outer level, then perform all the operations in this level. And once all those checks and operations are done, then it'll go to the outermost level. And once it's finished, it'll go to the next block of code at this level, and then so on. Then we have expressions, which evaluate a value. Now this brings together what we've discussed in the last slide, the literals, variables, and operators. And these expressions form part of statements. Now these don't return a value, but it does do something. As I said, every expression is always inside a statement. You can have assignment statements, which look like variable name equals to some expression, for example, price is equal to 5 times area plus 4,000. Now here, 5 and 4,000 are the literals. Price and area are the variables. And the equal to sign is the assignment operator. 
the multiplication and plus are the mathematical operators. The right side is the expression and the whole statement is the statement. Now it's important to note that a reverse assignment is not possible. You cannot have an expression equals to a variable name. You cannot have 5 equals to x. It's always x is equal to 5. Another thing to note is that you cannot have an expression just by itself. You cannot just add two numbers and expect a result to be displayed like the calculator. You have to store the result of that expression into a variable using the assignment statement. So x is equal to 2 plus 5. And then you can output that result by outputting that variable. So you can display that later using the output statement. Now another kind of statement are the flow control statements like loops or branch statements and we'll discuss this in a later video. Every statement is one or more lines of code but it usually fits on one line. In VBA and Python the end of the line signifies the end of the statement. However in VBA you can continue to the next line with a space underscore. In Java, JavaScript and C Sharp a semicolon is used to signify the end of the statement and that tells the computer okay this is the end of the statement move on to the next statement. Now here I've shown how you start a program and end a program in the three different languages. So in VBA you start a program using the sub keyword followed by the identifier program name or any name that you choose that's appropriate to the name of the program followed by round brackets and you end a program in VBA using the end sub keywords. In Python you don't name your programs, they are the name of the file itself, but you do name your functions using the def keyword. So it's def followed by the function name that you choose, followed by round brackets and a colon. The colon signifies that everything below that belongs to this function and it should be properly indented. Now the end of a function in Python is just a line break and which is why it's important to maintain your indentation and line breaks in Python. And in JavaScript, you use the function keyword to start a function, followed by the function name, followed by round brackets, and the opening of a curly bracket. And the closing of the curly bracket signifies the end of that function. So everything between that belongs to that function. Now in Java, it's a bit more complex and we will see that later. Now in between this program, I have just put comments. So comments, as I said, do not get executed. In VBA, you have comments after a single quote, and everything after a single quote gets ignored. So you can put whatever comment you want. Now you can have multi-line comments. Of course, each of them have to start with a single quote. In Python, a comment starts after a hash. So everything after a hash is ignored. You can have multi-line comments between three double quotes, and so everything between these triple double quotes will be ignored. You can have 10 lines between these two triple double quotes. In JavaScript and in Java, you can have comments after double slash and multi-line comments between slash star and star forward slash. And you can have as many lines as you want between these. Now we'll discuss data types and variable declarations. Now, if you're a researcher dealing with lots of data, you will have noticed that data can be of many types. We'll get to the why we need to know the different data types. I'll first explain what they are. Now, we've already discussed that there are numbers or numerical data types, booleans, which are yes or no, and strings, which are text. And you can have arrays, which are a collection of multiple elements. Now, numbers can be integers or it can have decimals, which are known as floats. Now in programming, you have small numbers and large numbers differentiated because of memory allocation. So you usually put small numbers in low memory and large numbers in high memory. So you have short integers, for example, 1, minus 53, or 3921, or you have long integers, or longs. In VBA, it's anything above 32,000, but in Java, it's everything above 2.1 billion. For example, 190 billion, which happens to be the net worth of Jeff Bezos at this time. 
So we'd use a long for that. Then you have single precision floats, which are decimal numbers less than six decimal places. For example, 4.93 or minus 4.5432. Or you can have double precision, which are seven to 15 decimal places. If you're designing a satellite guidance system, then I would stick to double precision. Now, a couple of things to note here is in Java and Python 2.x, a division between two integers results in an integer. So if you have 5 divided by 2, you would get a 2. So unless you're sure you're not going to use division between integers, I would stick to floats. Now you might say, why not always use double precision to be safe, as it contains all integers and floats? The answer has to do with memory allocation, which then decides how efficient your program is when dealing with complex computation or large data sets. So moving on to Boolean, which I stated are binary states, like true or false, 1 or 0. Then you have strings, which represent text within single or double quotes. For example, 2 between double quotes is considered as a text, and it's not used in any mathematical operations. Or you can have high there with a space in between, between quotes. Then you have arrays, which are a collection of more than one elements. Now, a 1D array is essentially a list of numbers or objects or names. For example, you can have 1, 3, 7, or apples, oranges, bananas, or a mixture of them. Now, a two-dimensional array is an array of arrays, and so it results in a table. So if you can imagine a single array is a row of a table, for example, name, age, and sex is one array. Then you can have another array within the array, which is John, 25 male. And then you can have another array, which is Jane, 22 female. So these individual arrays are like rows of a table. Now, a thing to note in arrays is that each of the elements position is referred to by its index. And most programming languages start with index 0. That is, the first element is at index 0. The second element is at index 1. That means that 1 is at index 0, 3 is at index 1, and 7 is at index 2. Apple is at index 0, orange is at index 1, banana is at index 2. This array is at index 0, this array is at index 1, and this one at 2. So keep in mind that, as it's very important. Now here I mentioned that arrays can be considered like rows. But generally, we use arrays to pick columns of data when we're dealing with reading data from databases. Because suppose you have a million people or objects or rows of data and three characteristics or columns of data. Then you would rather store the data in three arrays rather than a million arrays. So I'd rather have one array for names, one array for ages, and one array for sex. So then you can refer to the ith name and the ith age and the ith sex where i is the index. So hopefully you've got an idea of why and how arrays are used. It's a little bit complicated for now but it's useful to have a bit of an understanding of arrays at this point. Now you may be wondering why do you have to know about data types and the reason is that before you start with your main code you have to inform the computer what types of data will go into your variables. This is known as declaration of variables, where you declare a variable name of your choice within the naming conventions allowed and its type. Variables are like containers or boxes. You need to specify the size of the box appropriate to the contents. If you don't specify it, it's like asking your packers and movers to bring 10 boxes without really specifying the type of contents. So to be safe, your packers will bring the biggest boxes he has, which may not be appropriate for packing your tiny showpieces. So it's better to specify that you need five small boxes, three medium boxes, and two large boxes. It will save on the overall space requirement in the vehicle, or in programming terms, the overall memory requirement, and your program will run faster. Now, as I mentioned, variable names are user-defined, which are to be relevant to the data stored. 
but each language has their own conventions. But usually, the first character of the identifier must be a letter or underscore. The rest of the identifier name can be letters, underscores, or even digits. Now, identifier names are case sensitive, and conventions include flat case, where all are lowercase. Then you have lower underscore case. Everything is lowercase with an underscore separating two words. This is the preferred method in Python. Then you have upper camel case and lower camel case, where the first letter of each word is uppercase. And in lower camel case, the first letter of the first word is lowercase, whereas the first letter of the remaining words is uppercase. Now in Java, you use upper camel case for classes and lower camel case for methods. And we'll discuss what classes and methods are later on. Now don't be alarmed by all this code. It will be difficult to remember everything now. That will take time. What's important at this stage is to understand the concept of the syntax, keywords, operators, expressions, statements, and obviously declaration of variables. Now, keywords are marked in bold blue. Identifiers are italicized, variables being white, and the text strings being in gray. Comments are in green and are not executed. You can always come back to this video to refer to the syntax, or you can download the cheat sheet with all the commands covered during this course in the link in the description. Now, as soon as you start your program, it's a good practice to declare all your variables, for which you have to do a bit of planning to know how many variables you need, but you can always add more later. Now, once you declare them, you can give your variables some initial values, which is called initialization. In Python, declaration and initialization of variables is done together in one statement itself. If you don't know the value initially, you can always set it to 0 for integer types, 0.0, .0 for floats, and a set of two double quotes for empty strings. If you don't initialize, the variable will be recorded as null or empty, which may cause issues downstream. So in VBA, we use the dime keyword to declare your variable. So I've used x as the variable name, but as I've said before, please use more descriptive variable names. So if I want to declare it as an integer, I use as integer. And for long, it's long, single for single precision, double for double precision, string for string, boolean for boolean. And if you don't know which of the data types it is, you can say variant. A variant will use the largest memory allocation, so use it wisely. Arrays can also be variant. Now you can assign an array to a variable using x equals to array being the keyword and then the contents of the array within round brackets. Now here it's a combination of a variable, a string and a number. And then you can select certain elements from an array and store that into another variable. So for example, if I want the name out of this array, I use the index and the it's at index 0, 1. So John is at index 1. So using the index, I can store its value into another variable. So let's say I choose another variable named name. So name is equal to x, which is the array, the entire array, and I just saying that I want the first index, which is John. So then John gets stored into the name variable. And this is how we can select certain elements from an array. Now in Python, as I said, we do not dimension or declare a variable separately. We declare and initialize at the same time. So Python automatically detects what data type it is and accordingly assigns the memory. So it's smarter in that respect. So when you say x equals to 1, it recognizes this is in small integer, so it will use a short. Uh, for x equals to 5 billion, then it will assign it as a long, automatically. This is a single float, this is a double float, this is a string, and these are booleans, x is equal to true or false. Now arrays 
can be assigned using the variable name equal to just the array contents in square brackets. And you can select a single element from that array using the new variable name equals to the array element and the index number inside square brackets. And this will tell that I want the first element or the first index from array x and store it into name. In Java and JavaScript, you use int for integer, long for long, float for single precision, double for double precision, and var for string, boolean for boolean, and you follow that by the actual values. So this is where we do the declaration and initialization together. And you end that with a semicolon. So in VBA, you do it separately. You first declare, then you initialize later on. In Python, you do it together. And in Java also, you do it together, but you have to declare what type it is and then initialize the value. If you don't know, then you just declare it without initializing a value. Arrays are specified in the following var variable name equals to the array within square brackets followed by the semicolon to end the statement. And similarly as in Python, you can select a single element using the new variable name equals to the array variable and the index number within square brackets followed by the semicolon. So that brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to go into the first statements, the input outputs or IO statements, which are the entry and exit points of your program. Be sure to like this video and share it with a friend. See you in the next video.